Hello and full person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the more exciting discoveries in regards to what scientists sometimes refer to as stupendously large black holes. Black holes that are even larger than the ultra-massive black holes and whose mass is usually measured in tens of billions or even hundreds of billions of solar masses or essentially up to 100,000 times more massive than the central black hole of the Milky Way galaxy. But I guess more specifically, we're actually going to discuss one of the more exciting discoveries from the most iconic gravitational lens known to us. The ones I've used before for a lot of different videos, because this is basically the most famous Einstein ring. Although, because this is not a perfect ring, and because it's basically not connected on top, scientists usually refer to this object as the cosmic horseshoe. And well, in the recent study, scientists discovered something super exciting about this object that basically connects directly to this concept of stupendously massive black holes. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with what this is first, just so that you understand what you're looking at. Now, first of all, Cosmic Horseshoe is obviously just one of many, many different Einstein lenses discovered in the last few decades. We've actually discussed some of the most exciting discoveries in one of the videos in the description, but in essence, this is how this phenomenon works. You have a really massive galaxy in front and some kind of a distant galaxy behind it, and both of these objects are aligned with planet Earth in such a way that a lot of distant light coming from the more distant galaxy basically gets bent and gravitationally lensed, forming a circular object around the more massive closer galaxy that serves as a gravitational lens. And so in 2007, at a distance of approximately 5.5 billion light years, researchers discovered the famous cosmic horseshoe. This was seen by the Sloan Digital Sky Survey and studied in more detail by the Hubble Space Telescope. And so here the foreground galaxy is roughly around 5.6 billion light years away from us, with the distant galaxy that forms the ring being approximately 18.8 .8 billion light years away. Or in more scientific terms, the redshift of 0.44 for the closer object and 2.3 for the farther object. And though the more distant object is obviously also kind of interesting, today we're actually going to be focusing on the lens itself. Or on this really massive, really bright galaxy right in the center, that's actually known as LRG 3-757. And LRG in this case stands for Luminous Red Galaxy. And as the name implies, it's extremely bright. And here, luminous red galaxies are usually super super massive galaxies, and usually elliptical galaxies, but are mostly made out of really old stars, and it's really due to their sheer number that they appear to be super bright. We actually expect a lot of these galaxies to reside inside really massive halos of dark matter and thus contain huge amounts of mass. And intriguingly, this particular galaxy seems to be one of the most massive we've ever discovered. It's at least 100 times more massive than the Milky Way, which is why it's able to produce this very beautiful gravitational lens. And well, because this galaxy is so massive, naturally, a lot of scientists expected this galaxy to maybe also host some kind of a really massive black hole. Mostly because we expect galaxies and central black holes to basically co-evolve. Or essentially, as the galaxy grows larger and more massive, very likely through various collisions, so does the central black hole. Or at least that was the previous assumption, based on decades of research and a lot of different computer simulations. We'll come back to this in a second, because in the last two years, especially after the James Webb Space Telescope observations, this assumption might have been proven to be sort of incorrect. But anyway, we basically expect most massive black holes to be in centers of most massive galaxies. For example, one of the most massive nearby galaxies, Massey 87, does indeed contain the most massive black hole within approximately 100 million light years away from planet Earth. The black hole whose picture was captured a few years back. But here this is believed to be under 6 billion solar masses, and so it basically qualifies as an ultra-massive black hole. Intriguingly though, in the last few years, scientists started to discover signs of something that they didn't really expect. Black holes that seem to be even more massive, and in some sense even go beyond potential theoretical limits. For example, the famous TON-618 we've discussed in the video in the description, also referred to as TONATSINTLA-618, located right here and believed to be approximately 40 billion solar masses. But the much more intriguing discovery was from the famous cluster known as Phoenix Cluster. Here, right in the middle, there's a region we refer to as Phoenix A. And this region seems to also contain a really massive black hole. It's now been estimated to be 100 billion solar masses. And that's about 25,000 times more massive than the central black hole of the Milky Way. And so because of these bizarre discoveries, apart from ultra-massive black holes, 
Researchers also proposed stupendously large black holes or stupendously massive black holes. Basically black holes whose mass is over 10 billion solar masses and also whose mass doesn't actually make a lot of sense. Mostly because we don't really know how exactly this would form. Nothing like this has ever been created in computer simulations. Also nothing like this seems to have an explanation in terms of theories. And based on what we know about black holes, they really should not get that big. And here for one simple reason. The so-called Eddington limit. And that's because if you have a black hole that's feeding really, really, really fast, consuming a lot of mass all at once, it's going to form a tremendously large accretion disk around itself. Basically, that's the result of the black hole feeding. But as the accretion disk grows larger and larger, it also starts to produce more energy and becomes much, much brighter. This is, of course, what we're seeing in this image from the M87. And at some point, this disk can become so large, so massive and so bright that the actual light from the disk starts to produce so much light pressure that everything around the disk starts to basically escape it. So basically here the gravity is not strong enough anymore and everything around the disk starts to slowly dissipate. In this case we refer to this as the Super Eddington Black Hole. Now we've discussed some of these in some of the previous videos in the description, but in essence a lot of these black holes have been discovered and even in those cases they don't seem to grow fast enough to acquire billions of solar masses in mass even after billions and billions of years. So here if they just grow naturally, by feeding, they could never really get that big. At least not to these stupendously massive black hole sizes. And what's even more intriguing is that at some point, once the black hole becomes approximately 10 billion solar masses in mass, any disk around it will actually become super super powerful almost right away, preventing these massive black holes from feeding effectively. So essentially here the accretion disk prevents the black hole from growing larger and from becoming more massive. Yet somehow Phoenix A and Ton 618 seem to be larger. Which of course means that these black holes became so massive in some other way. But in order to figure all of this out, we obviously have to find more. Which is of course why the observations from here and the new study are actually kind of important. And so here the study by Carlos Melo Carneiro and the team from Brazil and the United Kingdom seems to have discovered that right in the middle of this gravitational lens there is indeed a really massive black hole. Another ultra massive or technically stupendously massive black hole that seems to be 36 billion solar masses. Which is 6 times more massive than the one in M87 galaxy and 9000 times more massive than the one in the Milky Way. And here this was confirmed through additional observations and by essentially calculating what's known as the velocity dispersion. Or basically how fast the stars in the center of the galaxy seem to be moving. And here this value focuses on how much the star velocity varies around the typical average speed. And the more difference in velocity there is, the more likely there is some kind of a massive black hole affecting everything. With more massive black holes usually producing much greater velocity dispersion. This is also known as the M-sigma relation and you can learn about this in the link in the description. And while so far this relationship has been proven to be pretty much correct for most galaxies. The more massive the black hole in the center, the more stellar velocity dispersion there is in a galaxy. And so in this case this link is basically established once again. Here, based on the observations of dispersion velocity, researchers confirmed the existence of a very massive black hole in the center. But there was a bit of a surprise. Here the black hole was more massive than expected. In other words, it was basically above this M-sigma relationship, with the black hole producing even more dispersion than the scientists expected. And surprisingly, this is actually what the scientists discovered in a lot of other similar very massive very bright galaxies, especially the ones in centers of various galactic clusters. In other words, in some of the more extreme, more massive galaxies, black holes seem to be even more massive than expected. Which is actually the new surprise, or I guess the second mystery. The first mystery is of course in regards to how this black hole formed, and the second mystery is why is this black hole more massive than it should be. Because in some sense this actually suggests that there's a kind of a decoupling between galactic evolution and black hole evolution, with black holes basically evolving separately from the galaxy. Now one of the potential explanations here was that this galaxy could be part of what's known as the fossil group. Or basically galaxies in a very late stage of evolution, where there's practically no activity and practically no interaction between galaxies. And what we're seeing is basically the result of previous mergers where a lot of other stars were removed over time and only some of the stars survived and remained inside, thus changing the overall velocity dispersion making these galaxies appear just a little bit different. Alternatively, this could also be explained by some kind of a previous superactive activity from the central black hole, which might have previously stopped star formation a long time ago, thus affecting a number of stars 
and changing the velocity dispersion once again. Or maybe this is just an extremely ancient quasar that's now basically been quiet, which potentially grew much more massive than it should be just because it was actually feeding extremely actively for billions of years. In other words, there's really no explanation yet, and the only thing we know for sure is that there's indeed a really, really massive black hole in the center of this galactic cluster, and specifically in the center of this gravitational lens, and it seems to be way more massive than it should be. 36 billion solar masses. And while intriguingly, this to some extent connects to some of the previous discoveries from the James Webb in regards to a new mystery we now refer to as Little Red Dots, a discovery of thousands of these unusual objects that seem to be all over the place and that seem to represent galaxies where black holes are just way more massive than they should be and seem to grow in a very different way from how scientists predicted them to grow. And so for all we know, maybe this galaxy is actually the final product of one of these objects. An ultra-massive black hole that grew really fast for billions of years, eventually acquiring a really large amount of stars around it and turning into a very bright, very massive object able to produce powerful gravitational lenses. And so in other words, right now it's unclear exactly how this formed and why these black holes exist. With the additional mystery that we explored in some of the previous videos being in regards to what's the actual physical limit for a black hole. And so obviously the brightness of the accretion disk creates one limit, but turns out that there might be even more limits that were explored in this study by Andrew King that might be the result of the spin of the black hole itself as it grows larger and larger. Because at some point, once the black hole becomes large enough and massive enough, the edge of the black hole is actually going to have a limit to how fast it can spin. Mostly because nothing can obviously move faster than the speed of light. This might be the actual physical limit for black holes. In this case, it would be 270 billion solar masses. So approximately 9 times more massive than the black hole that we've just discussed. But the reality is that we obviously have no idea. Right now, these are completely new observations and we've only discovered these black holes in the last decade and many more are probably still hiding in a lot of data. Which basically means we're not going to have more answers until future observations and until future studies. And so until we discover what's going on with these stupendously massive or stupendously large black holes, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos on a similar topic in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.